Hello everyone, this is Sheldon from Sheldon Art. Welcome to my channel. I was working on a uh, another palette today and I'm trying to go a little bit more monochromatic, but I'm gonna have a couple of, uh, I'm working on blues and greens. But um, I still like a couple of little contrast colors to add in there just to give it just a little bit of contrast. So let's get started. I'm gonna do a 12 inch canvas, I mean a 12 inch bloom on this uh, round canvas here. Um, and so let's get started. I'm using um, Glidden Premium Semi-Gloss this time with some water. Normally I do Glidden Essentials, but they work either way. I'm using this down for the pillow first. So let me put down a nice little amount for a pillow. Normally I do the tiles and smaller blooms, but on some occasions, I like to do some big boys. And then I'm gonna start layering my paint. Sorry for the shake, I was putting my, putting my um, uh, paint can down, get out of the way. So I'm gonna give this a dark bronze black backdrop. I like the dark bronze in the background for some reason. I just started doing it recently, and for some reason I just love the color the way it turned out. So that's my uh, background there. And then I'm gonna use up the rest of this gold just to kind of get rid of it. That's the reason why it's here. I may not have put it on there, but I'm, I just want to free up some space on my table, so I'm using up some older paints. This still lends itself to the monochromatic because when the colors blend, the gold will blend right in and kind of lighten up some of that green as I blow it out. Well, it should. That's my goal. But if it doesn't that, that's another story. I got this key line from Color Art. And I know a lot, of, a lot of people tend to spend a lot of time popping bubbles. Eventually they'll pop up. I just don't worry about the bubbles because as long as they're not in the uh, pillow, I'm kind of good with that. I'm going to just use the rest of this up. Give it a bluish tint by using some more of this B mine up. Just to add a little touch of the turquoise to the greenish colors here. You know what? I'm gonna finish that off too. Because it's really not enough, nothing here to do another pour anyway. I'm gonna finish this off here. And I would add interference in here, but like rain, but that's got green sparkle, but these, these pigments that I'm adding to it anyway have plenty of sparkle to it. So it'll probably be a bit of a waste. Um, this is Peacock Feather. Another shade of green. Now this one I'm gonna add probably the rest of this. This is another contrast I wanna have closer to my cell activator. And this is my, um, I believe it's called Wine and Roses. It could be called something else. I have to actually look at it. I believe that's what it's called. It's like a very, uh, it's one of my favorite colors uh, in the violet range. It's almost like a burgundy violet. It is just so beautiful. 
and it's got a lot of sparkle to it as well, a lot of shimmer. So that one's done. And then I bought some boom stain gel, boom gel stain, Eclectus Green from the Eclectus palette. So I'm gonna put some of that kind of in the center. Then an opaque um, lime green from Liquitex. So I'm going like light, dark to light to dark to light to kind of give myself some multicolored contrasting cells, even though I'm staying within the green range. But I just want some of that violet to pop up in the green. And a little bit, not a lot, of this white, just to border some of the cells. I mean, literally like that much, Com by comparison to everything else. Let me grab my blow dryer, okay. And now, I'm gonna add my black cell activator. And blow it out. I want plenty of that on there just because I want to get it to cover all these colors. That is so beautiful. Let me see if I can get my straw and blow in to some of these areas here. I try to just blow across instead of blowing down. So hopefully I can get some of this area opened up. Get some flower cells in there. Those cells are growing as the paint collects. And then I'm going to do some modifications. So it's such a big piece, I like to use the fat part and not the point of my toothpick. So let me see what I can modify inside of here. Little swirl here. Um, light swirl there. I don't like, as I've said many times before, I don't like to mess up my cell structures. 
So where there's a place that a lot of cells are, I leave it alone. But if there's a place that doesn't have a whole lot of interest, I kind of want to um, accent that part. Maybe here, in this little area right here. I will bring out, maybe pull some lines in here. So, just to change it up a bit. All right. Now all those cells kind of collected together. Now I'm going to spin slowly until I get, get enough paint off. So let's start. I don't want to jerk the paint around because it will What do you say? It will um, make the cells get wonky. Okay, slow down. Okay, I think I'm good with that. I don't want to take off any more. I'm going to get the camera down and show you a nice look at this wonderful multicolored piece with a lot of the greens and the turquoise with just those little touches of that wine. I'm in love. So let me take you down for a better look. All right, folks, this is the final wet result. I got you down for a closer look at how these cells have developed. Look at all those multicolored cells. I'm very happy with this. Um, I will leave the recipe for the colors and the cell activator in the description box. So make sure you take a look at it if you desire to try um, this technique. I love it. I learned a lot of things from the different ones I've talk to on the group, Facebook group, as well as some of the different ones I learned from YouTube. So I am grateful for the things that I've learned. But for now, please like and subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. And for now, happy pouring and please stay safe. Good night.